Hello everyone. Today we are here with Midnight Marshall. Hello. <laughs> Luna, you're not gonna say anything. I'm I'm kinda nervous all of a sudden. <laughs> 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 like just because you saw the the thing live pop out, like, oh god, this is happening. <laughs> Well, is there anything either of you would like to say before we get started? I pooped today. Oh, really? seriously. <laughs> um, and now, well, I could use some coffee at the moment, but the coffee machine's broken. Aw, yeah. that's sad. Yeah. Well, we'll have to go to Seven Eleven at some point. Get like an espresso. Starbucks thing. Energy drink, you mean? Yeah, that. <laughs> I think you're gonna need it more than I do. Your brain dead right now. Well, if you guys are ready, we have a lot of questions for you, so we'll go ahead and get started. Alrighty. Okay, the first set of questions are narrator questions. Um, how did you come up with your channel name? Well, um, with the name of Midnight Marshall and everything, like originally, it was just gonna be just an idea to make my make my name sound kind of cool. Because <laughs> during that time, before it was Midnight Marshall, I was just going by a nickname that I had, which was Marshallamu, which is one of the which is the reason that you know my channel link and everything will have the username Marshallamu in the URL. But eventually, I started wanting to. You do scary story. I'm hearing an echo. <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> yeah, I started. Um, I started wanting to do scary stories and everything because there was a point where I came across um, Squidward's suicide, and you know it intrigued me and everything because like I liked SpongeBob and everything. So I was like, "Well, this sounds interesting. What's this all about?" And then I read it and like, "Oh shit." <laughs> So that pretty much got me interested in the whole creepypasta thing. And after that, and I started, you know, writing my own stories for a little while. And um, I just started telling myself, you know, you have to come up with a different name because Marshall Mew, it, it's not going to stick. You got to come up with something. So I eventually came up with Midnight Marshall and um, it just kind of, it, it stuck. Yeah. <laughs> How did your persona come to be? Well, with that, it took a little bit more brainstorming because after I um, after I came up with my with my channel name, I started thinking to myself, well, like it sounds cool and all, but I think that it'd be cool if there was like a little bit of a backstory behind it. So that's when I actually started thinking about a persona because during that time I was just being me, being being a voiceover reader yeah and um you're making it so awkward shut up <laughs> um but yeah i started thinking about persona of like taking elements of myself and turning it into a character so i came up with this idea that character wise i am like this um former member of the of the clergy who is saved one night by a demon and that demon just happens to be none other than midnight Ta <laughs> and it causes me to you know to go renegade and stuff because i quit the clergy after you know accusing them of lying to me and stuff because i was told that like, oh demons can't do good things and she saved my life so that was a good deed and you know later on down the road you know i meet her again and you ask her like, well why'd you save my life and i think and um and she says that what was it like that you didn't want to be the monster that people say that you were something like that um that i wanted to show the world that that demons do bad things in the brain because we don't have a choice and i wanted to show them that we that some of us want to have a choice and We'll do anything to you know get that point across. So basically, I was you know I was trying to prove a point to him. 
and lo and behold that's how we joined together and boom midnight Marcia. Okay. do you have any future plans for your channel oh yeah definitely um yeah because we want the channel to not just be a creepypasta channel we want it to be like a multi-purpose channel so um at some point we'd like to start doing like let's plays and um like write music and stuff like that because like i mean primarily we are going to be doing horror based stuff but we want it to be more like horror comedy to have like some horrific horrific moments some comedic moments some little bit of both at the same time but yeah definitely want it to be a multi-purpose channel yeah like um I think that the the idea is that I'm going to be doing the gaming stuff and do some rants and stuff here and there. And we'll both be taking part in the music stuff because we love music. Yeah, love music. And we'll be taking turns with the creepypasta stuff. As we, we've actually started doing that now. Like we've been doing like a little tag team kind of thing. Like I'll do a story, she does a story. We fairly recently started doing that. So hopefully people are liking it. How has narrating changed you and your life? It has changed, um, it has changed me in my life because of the fact that, you know, it gives me a chance to be an entertainer. And, you know, like that's, that's one of the things that I've always wanted to do is to entertain people and immerse them in a different world and everything. And, just you know, refrain refrain from being just myself for a while and get lost in another world because sometimes we kind of need that to you know get the stress out of our system or just take our minds off of um situations in our in our real lives because real life sucks sometimes and you need a getaway and this has provided a getaway for me Why did you start narrating? I um I started narrating because um I've al I've always been really into storytelling ever since I was a kid and everything because like back when I was a kid I had these these read along cassette tapes and stuff and um the majority of them were like you know Disney stories. Like I'd be listening and reading along to like Beauty and the Beast and Little Mermaid and then like Toy Story and stuff. And then I later on came across, um, I later on came across you know Star Wars and Indiana Jones, like the more somewhat young adult stuff. And then I found out that those had read along stuff. <laughs> I cannot words. Um, yeah, and then later on, as I went into my teens and everything, I started becoming curious. It's like, I wonder if they had like any like audio plays. And then I came across this zombie podcast called We're Alive, which is freaking awesome. Like any of you guys who are watching this, if you want a really good podcast based um, audio drama series, go check out We're Alive because that is a really cool one so it's got zombies and a survival horror story it's, it's awesome you can't go wrong with zombies but um but yeah there's that and i came across the old school radio plays like inner sanctum and lights out which to this day i still listen to because sometimes when i have to you know focus on something i need something to to provide background noise for me and I like listening to like the old school radio programs and everything as I'm like editing a story or thinking of ways to, you know, put a story together that I'm working on and finding images and everything. Just like just to just to be able to focus, I guess, to put my put my mind in that zone. But yeah, like I've been listening to stories ever since I was a kid. Yeah, for me, um it's pretty much just like giving me something to do when I'm not hunting monsters and, you know, messing with the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> but I still do that a lot. Yeah. Do it in front of me. <laughs> okay. 
Which creepypasta do you want to narrate, but are having trouble doing so? Hmm. Yeah, this, this is the question that actually I'm really stuck on because there are a few stories that I've been wanting to do, but probably won't get the chance to anymore because um, cause they were on the Creepypasta Network website. And as far as I can tell, the website is just, is gone because I can never get into it. But there was a story that Mayor Rot. I think is how you say his name, but yeah, Mayor Rot wrote this story called Get Up and Dance, which is one of those stories where it's like you come across this, this bootleg tape, and I thought it was just going to be one of those, you know, lost episode things, but, ooh. Are you okay? Yeah, I just had to, I verped a bit. Yeah. Well, it's what happened. It's, I don't know why I did it. I, I haven't even eaten anything yet. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, get up and dance. There is a story about um this this show that supposedly got canceled off of Nickelodeon and stuff, but you know, I never heard of it and everything. And I looked into it and everything, and it's for all I know, it's not even an actual show. So. It was it was interesting to have like this possible concept of a show that didn't even exist, but you know makes you wonder if it did. So it has that suspension of disbelief and everything, and it was actually really creepy. Like I was a bit skeptical at first when I was reading it, but as it went as it went further and further into the story, I was just like my jaw started dropping lower and lower. It's like holy shit, I need to do this. This is creepy as balls. <laughs> um but yeah i added that onto the list and when it got to a point where i actually had the opportunity to do it i went back to the site and lo and behold creepypasta network network was um you know supposedly current you know going under maintenance and all that stuff you know they apologize for the inconvenience and blah 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 so i was just like gradually you know like more and more um but not more like I would continuously look into the website to see if it was up again, and it's still not working. So, like, I know I can only assume that it's that's just down for good. I guess I wasn't even I wasn't given any info in regards to why it shut down in the first place. But yeah, like as far as I can tell, the website's gone, so I can't do that story anymore. So it's disappointing. What creepypasta has made an impact on your life? Made an impact on my life. Um, that is actually a good question. Like, um, there are a few stories out there that really make you think of the possibilities and everything. And one of them was a story called An Egg. And it gives a very interesting perspective on the concept of reincarnation. Like I myself am not really certain about reincarnation because like that's more like a, what what is it like a, a Buddhist thing, but I'm not Buddhist, but I am open-minded and everything into like various possibilities. So like it, it could happen, but yeah, with that story, it basically is saying that like when you meet, when you meet your maker, you find out that you um, you make up the entirety of existence. And that's just like a, a major mind fuck because like just the concept of you being everybody in existence is just like a giant what the fuck factor. Because like it's it has a bit of creepiness to it just because of the fact that like it's something you cannot possibly comprehend but at the same time like it's it's kind of it's cool and the way that the story plays out and everything is it's it's touching as well so it has like various elements to it like it's dramatic it's 
it's got some subtle eeriness just because of that you know incomprehensible factor and yeah like it, it i like to think that it's it'd be a cool that would be a cool possibility but it's just like i wouldn't know how to react if that came to be What creepy pasta will you not narrate? It's very tempting to say Jeff the Killer, but <laughs> but but like chances are everybody wants to say that because it's like ah, oh, it's a terrible story, but it's so popular in me. But there, but but yeah, like um, it's either that just because of the fact that you know, like it's so poorly written, and I would want to. Um, I don't want to fix it up first if I even want to consider doing it, but I have noticed that the, the Five Nights at Freddy's fan base has just blown, blown that universe way out of proportion. So probably anything related to Five Nights at Freddy's, I'm not going to do because of the fact that like, it's almost impossible to go anywhere on YouTube nowadays where you're not going to see a song or a story or an animation or like a let's play compilation of five nights at Freddy's. It's like everywhere you go, five nights at Freddy's is there. It's just like stuck in you. And um, yeah, like I've, I've actually looked into some of the, some of the stories for five nights at Freddy's. And one of the things that I noticed that, you know, kind of makes me a little frustrated is because of that is the fact that like it'll be so popular and everything but really they're like the writer is just taking the gameplay and trying to make it into a story and somehow it you know gains popularity from that whereas with the ones that are a bit more creative like the hidden lore series um is a bit uh, it's it has popularity but only because of the fact that you know like the the bigger names in the creepypasta community make it so everybody else when they try and you know, make that make that move and like try and have their take on it it's kind of like like overlooked because of the fact that like, everybody else you know puts it like oh the hidden lore is like which creepypasta is saying like, but like you know when someone else tries to do it it's like okay cool like they'll just like move along and stuff and yeah, case in point, Five Nights at Freddy's, I'm not going to do. Unless, like, unless my viewers really want me to do it. And if they, you know, pressure me to do it, then I'll probably do a story from it, but just one. Like, one will be the maximum. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted my say it. <laughs> okay. That is it for narrator questions. The next set are writer questions. Round two. Which creepypasta do you wish you had been the one to write? Okay, with this one, I'm going to say Jeff the Killer. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, it's just because of the fact that Jeff the Killer has so many freaking plot holes. And, like, it, it makes no sense. Like... Okay, like he gets he gets burned up and stuff because he got covered in bleeding alcohol and everything, and he turns into a killer. But like, what like, what is it about that situation that causes him to to snap all of a sudden? And like, furthermore, like, why would you attack? Why would you attack? You know the bullies and stuff, and and, and like cause trouble and everything, and then run away and make yourself look bad, and then it's like. There's like all these situations in the story that make no sense. And like there are various spots where, you know, some detail can be minimized and others can be extended. But like it's, it just seems like the story just goes all over the place. And I to this day have no idea how it got so popular because of just how crappy it is at the moment. But if I was ever given an opportunity to edit it, and uh, try and give it some more, you know, flu fluidity, I guess the word, like, more continuity is what I was looking for. Um, 
yeah, if I was able to give more continuity to the plot, then I would probably do it after that. But as it is, it's probably not going to happen. Who are your favorite creepypasta writers? Creepypasta writers? Um, I have a few. Um, Yaku Yabai is one of them. Um, because, like, he... I came across him from finding out about the story um, Putrid Love, but there was this poem that I found called This Old Man, which I was expecting to be like a little creepy take on the, on like the, the children's nursery rhyme thing. And it might be, but it's like, it's, it's, it's disturbing because like I, yeah, like actually, that's one of the very first collaborations that I did. Is that I did that poem, and Yakuya by himself was able to help me out with it, which was cool. And um, yeah, like I, I definitely want to do some more of his more of his works. And then there's Equinox, Indefinite Silence, and um, I I can never get this guy's name right. Like I don't know if it's Vincent V. Kava or mm -hmm. Kava or Kava. It's Kava. Kava? Vincent mm -hmm. V. Kava. Um, yeah, he he's one of them for sure. And like and even even though Slime Beast kinda has a bad rep and everything, like I still like his stories. Um so like there that I I would have to say like him as well, just because of the fact you know he is a good writer, but like just the fact that he has like a bad a bad rep and everything personally. Um yeah, I don't, I don't really know. Like, I like his works, but not as much as other people's works, I guess. Like, I I don't know how to say it without sounding like a prick. So, like, I'm just going to say, like, Slime Beast is one of one of the writers. But I'm always looking for, you know, new writers and everything to, to keep an eye open for that are less known. And it seems like Equinox and Indefinite Silence are, like, Two of two of said writers, but their works are really good. So you, you guys watching and listening, you check these guys out. Like, if you need a, if you need a reference in regards to like what their works is, just like go to my channel and everything, and just look for the name like by Equinox or by Indefinite Science and everything. It should be on there, and just read along and check out their stuff because they're they're awesome. And I just I'm. I don't even shut up now. <laughs> Next question. Where do you get your inspiration? My inspiration for writing. Um, really, I get my inspiration for writing from situations and experience in my life. Um, what I do is that when it comes to writing a story, I'll usually wait until something um, comes up. Oh, one second. I don't know why I burp so much when I have no food in my belly. It makes no sense. Excuse me. Um, shut up, stomach! Uh, yes. I will take a situation and experience from my life. Like, let's say that... Take my first ever story called From Behind. Um, Beauty. Shut up! It's not that kind of story. It's a ghost story. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but yeah, with From Behind, it was based off of an actual experience that I had um, back in 2012, where I was having like a really bad case of insomnia, and I just like I was going downstairs to just kill some time on the computer and everything, just like pass the time and everything, and I just suddenly came down with this paralysis and. I couldn't move or get out of the chair and everything. And over time, I started having this feeling that there was something standing behind me. And I could just like imagine in my mind what it would look like. And you know, like after the experience passed, um, which by the way, like I, I don't think that it was an actual paranormal experience. It was just like a really bad case of um, 
paranoia and insomnia and sleep deprived hallucinations and everything. But, you know, just like say a prayer and it, and it diminished. But, you know, after that happens, a few days later, I started thinking like, I got to write this down. This is actually a good story material. So I, I, I wrote it down and gradually it started turning into a story. And I just, I just told myself, okay, here on in, anytime something weird happens, write it down because otherwise it's just going to manifest in your, in your mind and everything. And you're going to think that you're going crazy. So basically anytime something weird happens, I'll write it down and turn it into a story. And yeah, like it, it's, yeah, it's, it's, I think, I, uh, God, this is probably the most awkward interview ever. I'm so sorry, people. I cannot words. Oh, uh, no worries. Believe me, this is, <laughs> this is not the most awkward. <laughs> but, um, but no, like, but I guess what I'm trying to say is when, like, it has helped me turn a negative into a positive because every time something freaky happens and I turn it into fiction, um, it basically becomes, you know, something that I don't have to take seriously anymore because like, I'll from there on in, I'll just see it as, you know, just story material. And I'll just look back and be like, eh, it's hard to believe that actually happened. How has writing changed you and your life? Hmm, that's very interesting. Hmm, probably the, like, just the fact that I'm able to turn it into literature and entertainment and everything, it gives me a chance to take an experience I had and make it something entertaining and eerie for someone else to enjoy. So it's almost like I'm taking a personal negative tossing it out to the world and you know and have them look at it as like it's interesting like it's interesting how he took something in his life and made it something for us to enjoy so i guess you know that's yeah that's how it changed me in my life and everything and plus like outside of creep pastas and everything writing um has changed me in my life because one of the other things that I do is that I write music from time to time or poetry and everything. Like very rarely will I write poetry, but usually usually it's it's music based. And um again, it's driven by something that will happen in my life and everything, as you know, musicians tend to do. But with that, I like to go more towards an a bit of a more eclectic and abstract kind of style for like the the music and everything but you know with that i'm always trying to figure out like how to take a negative experience like like a breakup or an inner struggle of like a situation i find myself in or just like going away and being my own place to clear my head and everything just taking various bits and pieces of myself and putting it into music and um, writing lyrics and stuff relating to what I'm currently going through or what I experienced in the past. It's just like, it's good to have a means of taking that negative energy and, you know, making it positive. Like, I, I feel like I keep repeating myself, but, you know, it's for a reason. It's like, it it really is that important to me and that impactful to me to do that because not everybody tends to do that. Not everybody is willing to, to express themselves, to take that negative experience and that negative energy and vent for themselves or just vent at all. Sometimes people will just like keep it inside and it changes them. And I don't, I don't want that to happen. Like I want, I want the negative experiences to make me a better person. And one of the things to do to make you a better person is to, is just to write it out, just get out of your system and make it something creative. Why did you start writing? 
Um, well, I mean, again, it, it plays into like turning a negative into a positive, but um, I started writing really um, back when I was taking therapy at a, at a young age and I was doing like journal entries and everything as was recommended by my therapist. Because during the time when um it, when I was in like junior high school, and you know, even through high school, and like in all honesty, like I still struggle with it. Like since I since I was young, I've been struggling with um, stress and anxiety, and um, like moments of depression and everything. And when I started writing, it kind of helped me get back on track with myself. So. I guess it started when I started doing like journal entries and everything when I was in junior high. And um, it wasn't until I went into high school that I started thinking about like taking those um, negative feelings and writing poetry and later on started attempting to write, um, attempting to write music. And you know, I just kept on doing that afterwards. And yeah, like it's just become a, a means of self therapy for me. Which creepy pasta are you most proud of writing? Probably snoring in the dark, because I feel like I feel like um, all the other stories that I've done up to that point had been somewhat cliche and and everything. Like when I look back at the at my older works, like the Nightmare Hallway and um, and from behind and um and, and those works the works that you know where i was you know trying to get into the whole creepypasta thing and i had never re written a scary story at all um yeah prior to all that and everything i thought that was you know being original and everything then looking back it's like oh wow that's kind of stereotypical of, of me to to have that in my story and everything. But like, it wasn't until I got to, to snoring in the dark that I felt like I was coming up with something somewhat original. Like there, you know, there are a lot of stories based around like sleep deprived um, experiences and everything. But to take, to take something like somebody snoring and turning that into something else, is um is actually kind of fun because like it's kind of funny too because like um the inspiration for snoring in the dark was um the fact that i always thought to myself that whenever my dad was snoring it sounded he sounded like a hibernating monster <laughs> and um <laughs> i just told myself like wait a second if he sounds like a monster while he's snoring you could turn that into something. So I, you know, I eventually came up with an idea to turn that into a story. And when I was done with it, I just like looked back and like, I like this. I, I like how this turned out. And yeah, like, I, I'd have to say that that's my, that's my favorite one that I've written so far. What is the earliest story you remember writing? The earliest story that I remember writing is um, is probably I want to say from behind just because of the fact that that's the first creepypasta I ever wrote, but I do recall um, that a few years back when I was in my my high school years, there was a point where I tried to write a a horror novel called um, Arachnomorph, where um. It's ba it was basically about this this boy who had like this major phobia of spiders and everything. So like every time he saw a spider in any way, shape, or form, he would kill it. And it I kind of wanted to be like somewhat somewhat R.L. Stein vibe ish kind of thing. Like I wanted to be scary, but not overly scary. So I wanted to have like a little bit of silliness behind it. So I had this idea that like that one night he has this nightmare of um, being chased down by like a swarm of spiders behind him and everything, and like he gets stopped by this giant tarantula like in front of him, and he gives him a warning that um, 
that basically basically what the tarantula was saying is that like he is judging he is judging them by their appearance and is simply accusing them of being these monsters and everything because they look horrid and in like different and stuff and after the nightmare the boy finds himself slowly changing into a spider like like a a humanized spider but there came a point where i hit the you know the the writer's wall and i couldn't advance the story anymore but yeah from what i remember that's like the the earliest form of scary story that i've wrote what story are you currently working on um the story that, that Midnight and myself are currently working on, we're trying to figure out how to um, bring our backstory to life. Because there are like so many ways of telling one's backstory when it comes to like character characterization and everything. But um, yeah, like it's it's hard to say what the what the what the plot would be because of the fact that there is so much that we want to have incorporated into it. But we we definitely want to at some point write a backstory for ourselves, and um, I, I, actually I'm gonna let Midnight you know say a few words because she hasn't said anything for a while. But yeah, like um, I don't know, like this is my opportunity to say stuff and I can't say anything. Um, yeah, basically we want to have like this idea of. Marshall and me incorporating elements of of creepypastas and have it play a part in our backstory. Like one of the things is um, one of the things is that Marshall has this this journal that I give him that is actually the Devil's Journal, which is also the Book of the Dead. And what it is is that is this journal filled with various accounts of the deceased and what their experience was that led up to their demise. And those would be the creepypastas that we read and everything. And we use creepypastas to, to basically look for monsters to, to hunt and destroy and or to find objects to, to basically destroy before they can be, you know, before they can come together and all that. And uh, yeah, like what what Midnight was saying is like we want to incorporate elements of creep and everything, but we also want to have, um, we also want to have you know some of our friends in the community to play a part in it as well. Because like Element Ember, I pretty much you know have been seeing as a sister, so I want to have us you know incorporate her into the story and like play her part into it. So. It's probably going to take a few years to figure out how to actually um, have it play out because it's going to be like pretty complex. But in the meantime, I guess we can just like turn our attention to the the channel teaser, where it's going to be a little like a little easier, obviously, because it's going to be a lot shorter. But we're trying to approach it in like the into like the teaser means is like like. Oh God! How do I say it? Um, we want it to be abstract and um, and enigmatic, something to make people wonder, like who we are and what we do. But we don't want it to be too abstract; otherwise, people are gonna be like hella confused and sort of like, "What are these people even about?" But we want, like, we want it to hint what we're about and what we do and who we are, without without doing the approach of like, hey, this is like this is me and this is what we do. Like we don't want it to be blunt and straightforward. We want it to be something creative. Yeah what he said. <laughs> I'm not I'm, I'm not even gonna say anything at this point. Like I need coffee like to even function. It's like that's actually one of the things that um, is incorporated in the story is that I develop a need for coffee to to keep myself stable because there's something in um in the like i don't know what it is about the coffee yet like that's something we have to figure out but there's something about the coffee bean 
that keeps my emotions intact and keeps me from going over the edge. So um, seeing that I'm a succubus and everything, like there are times where I just start building that urge to just like go after someone and just like part my French, but like fuck the shit out of them until like until I'm like rejuvenated again, basically. But you know, I don't want to do that because I'm trying to prove that I can be a good person. So like Marshall has this idea of like, oh, just drink this coffee, it'll keep you keep you stable and like, keep those those urges intact. And so like basically when I do jump on someone's bones because I want to. <laughs> There's no other way of me putting it, but um, yeah, uh, yes, I need coffee. Just in case in point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you and me both. Like, I need food too. My stomach won't shut the fuck up. Well, where do you see yourself going with your writing career? Writing wise, I'm probably going to aim more for the the music route because um, I have been noticing that when it comes to writing, I am really, really, really struggling with writing scary stories. Like I will come up with an idea to, to write out and everything. But the thing with me is that is that I will have a piece of a story to work with like usually it's just like the idea itself and i have to work around it i have to figure out like the beginning middle and end and it's it's really tricky to do that sometimes but that's like <clears throat> sorry um but i keep i keep noticing that when it comes to writing i'm better with writing music so I'm probably going to aim for just being a narrator of other people's works. And if I do manage to be able to write another story and everything, then cool. But I'm not going to be focusing on that. I'm going to be focusing on like ex giving exposure to other people's works, like some of which may be a little underrated and everything. Because there are like a lot of good stories out there that need exposure. And that's one of the things I want to aim for for my channel is like give exposure to the underrated authors and like the the stories that don't really have that much um recognition that that they really should have because there's some like i said there's some really good stories out there but i'm digressing as usual as usual <laughs> um but yeah like i want to focus on writing music because that's my true passions like i want to be a singer if anything like if i had to choose a means of entertainment that i wanted to do and that would be nothing but that I'd want to do music. So I'm going to focus on writing, writing lyrics and stuff for songs and everything. Some of which will be, you know, some creepypasta based stuff maybe. Um, but primarily I'm going to aim for like, you know, some indie stuff. Like, well, I'd be experimental actually. Cause like I'd be indie for one album and then like symphonic, um, symphonic pop for another and like, rock for another just like experiment with various things but yeah case in point i'm gonna focus on on writing music well we are on the last question and this question is for both of you all right what is a fun fact about yourself well um i guess um for me it's the coffee thing just because of the fact that like you don't you don't really hear about demons becoming stable from drinking coffee so that's the other thing but but i like to think that the the better fact about myself is the fact that um that marshall and i are a team despite the fact that you know i'm a succubus and he is a christian so people will see you know People will see us as kind of sacrilegious, I guess. Yeah, to an extent. Like that that's the thing about, you know, the idea that I had for Midnight and Me is that even though I am Christian, which is the fun fact for me, is that I'm a Christian that, you know, narrates group buses and everything, is that even though I am Christian, I'm not religious. 
because I noticed that religious people tend to like try and shove their beliefs into you. And I don't want to do that because, you know, people tend to, people tend to become jerks when you do that. So like, I want to be open-minded and you know, have that what if mindset and everything. So that's, that's one of the things that drove me to come up with the idea of, of Midnight's character and have that backstory and everything. It's like, okay, well, I'm a Christian, but what can I do to push the limits of, of the possibilities of good and evil? And, um, I guess, I guess another interesting fact about myself is the fact that like, um, that I've made friends with, with other people, um, with other people's belief systems, and everything like Satanists and pagans and everything. Like, like I know that usually with Christians and stuff, they refrain from those kinds of people, but in the end, I don't really know why. I mean, it's, it's a concept that I won't fully understand, but I do my best to, to do so. So like, I try and keep them open. I try and keep it open. I try to keep an open mind is what I'm trying to say. And, um, yeah, I just like to have like a very diverse group of friends now. Because yeah, same here. And like, um, just the fact that that we can that we can go back and forth the way we do and everything and just be able to, <laughs> to mess with people and stuff and people will just sometimes they'll just go with it and other times they'll be like what the fuck is going on <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of fun though i'm not gonna lie it's totally it's totally a lot of fun to just mess around with people because just because of the fact that um well, actually, I don't, I don't want I want to give out too much details, but when they find out about you know the back and forth like the back and forth tag team social thing that we do, um, it throws them off guard because they don't expect it. I mean, sometimes they do because like they start putting the pieces together and everything, but a lot of times it, it's fun to make them wonder what's going on because that's the form of suspension of disbelief that we're looking for is like have that 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 but i want you say it we look for the moment where we confuse them because it tells us that they have that moment where their suspension of disbelief is activated and it's fun to have that happen because it means that like in a way, it means that their imagination has taken hold, and they're, you know, they're being immersed into this, into this world that you can wrap. Yeah. Now I can't talk either because of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna say that. Um, that actually, no, I'm not gonna say anything. I, I'm just gonna shut up. I, I, uh, no, not God. <laughs> Well, is there anything else the two of you would like to say before we wrap this up? Yes. Um, <laughs> people, um, if you, yeah, like, I can't even be inspirational either because I'm so out of it. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Back square one. People of the internet, if you have a, if you have a means of entertaining somebody and people say that that um that it's weird or that it's 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 not the norm and stuff embrace that because when you're not when you're doing something that's not the norm then oh my god this is tough. <laughs> this is terrible fuck <laughs> you know what i just get i just stick with mr t's advice like the, the Stay in, stay in milk, go to school, and drink, drink your drugs. Okay. <laughs> You're a such moron. <laughs> okay, l let me try something. Um, guys, don't let, don't let anybody tell you 
who you should be and what you should do in your life. Just figure it out for yourself and and that that should suffice. Like if you have something to pursue and it's something that you really want, then go for it. And if it's just like telling scary stories and you know bringing characters to life and you know just being creative and imaginative and just getting lost in your inner child and everything, then do that because it could actually be really beneficial. It's kind of sad that a character who is a demon can be more inspirational than a human. <laughs> well, yeah, what she said. <laughs> it's okay, dingus. Why do you call me that? I feel like a like a dingus. That's my. <laughs> Well, for anyone who hasn't already, check the description below and go check out their channel and other social media. Social media. You guys got me. I'm, better at, I'm better at telling the stories. I swear, I'm not. I'm not this terrible all the time. <laughs> Make sure to go subscribe and like and comment and show love and support. And thank you to both of you for joining me today. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah. it's fun. I guess that is it for now. So, bye, everybody. Bye-bye.